Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. In this episode of Everything Music, we're gonna talk about reharmonization and chord substitution. Probably my longest title yet. We're gonna just talk about the basics and I'm gonna show you how to reharmonize a tune in a very simple way, even though it's going to seem complicated. Okay, so here's some basic rules for you. I've got three simple rules. We'll get into this in more detail in later episodes. But the first is, the bass note of a chord stays the same, but the chord quality changes. For example, a C minor seven chord becomes a C seven sharp nine, or a C seven chord essentially. Okay, so you're just changing the quality. You're going from a minor seven to a dominant seven, okay? And one of the reasons that is, is that, for example, if we're going to an, an F minor seven chord after this, that C7 is going to have more pull because it has the note E natural in it as opposed to E flat, which is the leading tone to F minor. So that's one of the reasons why you want to do these things, why you want to sometimes make your chord progressions a little bit more complex and more harmonically interesting so that you can have stronger resolution tendencies into tonics or using secondary dominance and things like that. that that's what would be in that case. Rule number two here, substitute another chord from the same modal family. So here we have the chord E minor seven flat five and I'm substituting B flat major seven sharp five. Both of these chords are from the key of G melodic minor. Okay, this is the sixth mode, this is the third mode. This would be Locrian natural two, this would be B flat leading augmented, but they are the same notes in each of those scales. Let me talk about modal family substitutions for a second. Here I have the key of G melodic minor, and these are all the chords that are found in, in it. Okay, this is the one chord, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These have corresponding modes that go with them. Now, the concept of substituting one for another is this. I can substitute any chord, for example, if I have an E minor seven flat five, I get E minor nine flat five, I'll make it E minor seven flat five. I can substitute any one of these other chords for this chord from the same family. The ones I like to pick out are ones that are actual chord tones of this. Okay, so B flat, for example. So you could use a B flat major seven sharp five chord as a substitute for E minor seven flat five, okay? You could also use another one off a chord tone. Uh, so let's say we take G minor major seven, minor, I'll put plus seven for major seven, that's a shortcut. So there I have uh, a substitution. This is part of the modal family. Let's say I have a C7 sharp 11, okay, a Lydian dominant chord. Well, one of the other possibilities is F sharp seven sharp five, which is ultra dominant. This happens to be a tritone substitute. This is why tritone substitutes work. Same thing here. I've got an F-sharp-7 altered chord. I put all the alterations in there, but F, let's say F-sharp-7, sharp-9. I can substitute C-7-sharp-11 for it. This is the tritone substitute. This is why it works. Because these both come from the same scale. They come from the same parent modal family. That's the reason that tritone substitutes actually work when you're soloing. If you look at a a standard C7 sharp 11 chord, and you play it and put an F sharp in the bass, it becomes an F sharp altered chord. So here's a C mixolydian sharp 11 sound, or a C13 9 sharp 11. This is from the mixolydian sharp 11 scale, or the G melodic minor scale. Check it out. Now, if I play this exact voicing over F sharp, I get F sharp altered dominant. They're the same scales. F sharp altered, C mix sharp 11. That's why tritone substitutes work in both ways. If I have a, uh, if I have a chord progression, G minor seven here, then I go to C, seven sharp 11, or if I went from G minor seven to F sharp seven altered, that would be a 
passing chord there, that would be a tritone substitute. And I could do the reverse, I could take um, C sharp minor 7, so it'd be... Then I could go to C7 sharp 11 as a tritone sub to B major 7. Okay, but I could do the same thing with F sharp altered. I could go two and then five is going to be the same thing, right? That's the normal five chord, but altered to the one chord. Okay, so tristone subs can work in two different keys. So there I used it in the key of E major. So my tritone sub in that case was C7. In the first case, when I used it in F major, the tritone sub was uh, F sharp seven altered was the tritone sub. It's a chord that moves from the two chord down to the flat two dominant and then to the one. I used it from G minor seven to F sharp seven altered to F major seven. And then I used it from G minor seven to C seven sharp 11 to F major seven. Then I used it from C sharp minor seven to C seven sharp 11 to B major seven or C sharp minor seven to F sharp seven altered to B major seven. You could also do it the reverse. I could play an unaltered F sharp seven chord and an altered C seven chord, which would be a similar thing. I, I do. So I could use a two five one like this using a tritone sub. So I go G minor seven F sharp uh, 7 or 13 and then to F major 7 or I could do it like this I could go G minor 7 to C altered to F major 7 if I do it like this it's C7 altered if I do it like this it's F13 I could actually put the the, the C in it and make it an F13 sharp 11 and this would still be C altered F sharp mixolydian sharp 11 so the two scales are completely related once you go from the, this is a different melodic minor this is from a D flat melodic minor I was doing an example of tritone sub so tritone subs can either be altered or unaltered depending on what scale parent scale you take it from I'm gonna do a whole video on this. You make it more, you'll be able to understand it a lot better. So what I'm gonna do in the example I'm gonna give you now in this reharmonization is I'm gonna use some of the substitutions will be modal family substitutions. And like I said, try and find notes that are part of the uh, chord tones of it, or you don't even need to. I can substitute, if I have a uh, E minor seven flat five, I can play an A, a uh, seven sus four flat nine uh, as a substitute for it. That's modal family substitutions. Two and number three, superimpose an alternate chord progression over the chord progression that you have. Here's our normal chord progression here. E minor seven to A seven to D major seven for two bars. That's a two five one in the key of D major. And the Coltrane substitutions are a substitution on a 2-5-1 progression. And they start on the two chord. So with E minor 7, then you move up a half step to F7. F7 resolves down to its one chord. You move up a minor third to C sharp 7 or D flat 7. And that will resolve to its one chord, which is F sharp 7. Move up a minor third to A7 and resolve that dominant chord to its tonic chord, D major seven, where it will intersect in the second bar of D major seven. So this is how superimposing an alternate chord progression would work. And there's other ones that you will see in the example that I'm gonna use. Okay, let's take a look at the reharmonization here. So what I've done is I have the standard changes that are here that most people play, and then I have my reharmonization up above. Um, I'm going to be borrowing things from other families. I'm going to be changing the quality of the chords. I'm going to be doing some of the things that I talked about when talking about how to reharmonize things and using some sub changes. So in our first bar here, we have E minor 7 flat 5, which I'm substituting a B flat major 7 sharp 5. Well, they're both from the same melodic minor family, uh, especially when one of the notes is a chord tone of the chord that you're playing. 
So the flat five, I'm building a the major seven sharp five off the flat five of the E minor seven flat five. This is the third mode of G melodic minor. And this is the sixth mode. Okay, so those are interchangeable there. So this is my substitute chord here. On A7 sharp five, I'm doing an E flat major over A, which gives me a um, dominant seven flat five flat nine sound. On C minor seven, I'm substituting a G minor seven flat six, on, um, which, which is, uh, has a lot of similarities to C minor seven. On my F7, I'm substituting F major over G flat. So it's a major chord with a flat nine on the bass. So it's essentially making this like an F7 flat nine. I'm substituting a, a G flat tonic diminished chord for an F7 flat nine. But if you just take the notes of the chord, F, A, C, and G flat, G flat being the flat nine, that's where you know that where that's coming from. And then here, on this two, five, one, in E flat, that's the two chord, the five chord, the one chord here, F minor seven, B flat seven, E flat major seven. I'm doing the Coltrane substitute chord changes here, the Coltrane changes. I start on F minor seven to match here, but then I immediately go into the Coltrane changes. They happen to be in the exact key of the song. Uh, F sharp seven resolving to B major seven, up to D7, down to G major seven. There's your five one. So you've got two different five one cadences, a third apart. And then the last uh, five one is B flat seven to E flat major seven. Now this E flat major seven, I'm carrying over to the first two beats of this bar right here. So essentially you've got two beats of E flat major seven and then two beats of the original chord, A flat seven flat five. So we've intersected with this chord progression and then we're picking up on the last two beats with this, with this uh, A flat seven flat five chord. On the B flat major seven, I'm substituting a tonic diminished chord, which is very common to do. So A major over B flat. And then I'm on to E minor seven flat five to A seven to D minor seven. That's a minor two five one in the key of D minor. And here, once again, I'm substituting the parent scale. This time though, I'm using G minor major seven because it's based off the third of the E minor seven flat five chord. So I'm, I'm using substitutions based off chord tones from the same melodic minor family in this case. Here I've got A7 altered and I'm using an F over D flat, which is a Lydian augmented D flat major seven sharp five, which is from the same family as, D, as A7 altered, which is B flat melodic minor. I know this is a lot of stuff to think about, but you have to be really, really fast on your feet with, with memorizing this. Here, F Lydian over D minor, that's simply a D minor 13 chord, okay? So it's just an upper extension to give a color. And then on this two five and A flat, that's the two chord, the five chord and A flat major, I'm substituting an E flat sus four flat nine sound um, over that. So I'm thinking of E flat seven for the entire bar, but I'm using a different sound here. The sus four flat nine has a very different kind of dominant sound on it. And then I'm into a three, six, two, five in the key of F. The three chord, I'm doing F add nine over A. So it's pretty much the same chord as A minor seven, but it's more like an A minor seven flat six. Then here I'm doing a A flat over D, which gives me a, a D seven flat nine flat five sound. Then G minor seven, I'm substituting D flat add nine over G, which is really from the G altered dominant. So I'm changing the quality of this chord to a dominant seventh. You could make all these seventh chords too. That's a, another way of reharmonizing it. I could do A7 altered, D7 altered, G7 altered, C7 altered. I could do A7 altered to A flat seven to G7 altered to G flat seven using tritone substitutes on these two chords as well. But I'm using a D flat add nine over G, which gives me out of the G altered dominant or, or a G altered dominant mode. Then I'm doing F major over C, which once again is a flat nine, flat five sound. Dominant seven, flat nine, flat five sound. So this can be out of the altered dominant scale or the dominant diminished scale. Because there is no fifth in this chord, there's no G uh, to speak of, at least spelled in the voicing I'm using as a substitute. It can either be from the altered dominant family or the dominant diminished, the C dominant diminished or C altered dominant family. Then we go down here to A minor seven flat five. This is our minor two five one that goes to G seven. But 
Over this, I'm using E flat major seven flat five. Once again, I'm substituting a chord based on the flat five, which is a chord tone of the A minor seven flat five. Then I go to D seven altered, and I'm doing F sharp major seven flat five. So it's a parallel. So this is the same chord moving up. I guess I could even call this G flat if I if I want to. Probably easier to uh, G flat. I put F sharp because it's built off the third of the. Uh, it's built off the third of the D7 chord, so that's why I used F sharp. So this is built off the flat five here, this is built off the third, but essentially these two chords are a minor third apart. And then here, over the G7 sharp five, all the way over to this A flat seven flat five, I'm using the cycle of fifths, okay, or fourths, depending on which way your bass is moving. So. I'm deciding where I want to go. I want to hit A flat seven in this bar, which I do, and I'm back backtracking. I'm going back a bunch of five chords here, five chord resolutions until right here. And then I figure out that on the G seven, if I start on E seven, start the cycle and then do five, seven to five, seven to five, seven to five, seven to five, seven, five, seven to five. Those are all five, seven to fives. Those are all secondary dominance right in a row, but that's the cycle. And it will give you a really strong leading into the into this A flat seven flat five chord. So E seven, A seven, D seven, G seven, C seven, which happens to line up perfectly with the C minor seven. So this is just a, an exchange of a um, of the quality of the chord from minor seven to a dominant seventh chord to F seven, B flat seven, E flat seven. That's a perfect five one cadence down to this A flat seven flat five, and I have the original chord there. And the second bar of it, though, I drop down to G flat major seven sharp five, which is still out of this Mixolydian sharp 11 family, but this is the third mode as opposed to the fourth mode, and I'm using it as a alternate chord. Then I come down here on my B flat major seven, and I'm playing once again uh, B flat tonic diminished, so A major over B flat, resolving to B flat major 13, then on E minor seven flat five, I'm using F sharp seven, sharp five, sharp nine. This is from the same alter dom from the G melodic minor scale. And I'm using it as a substitute for E minor seven flat five. On A seven flat nine, I'm using G minor 11 flat five, which is also from the B flat melodic minor scale. This is it uh, would be A alter dominant or G, Locrian natural two, okay? So I'm, I'm just borrowing from the family to create interest. D minor seven flat five, I'm using F minor seven, I'm using D minor seven five, D minor seven flat five, I'm using F minor major seven. On G seven flat nine, I'm using a G major over A flat, which gives me G, B, D, and A flat, which is a flat nine, so that's it. This is a tonic diminished chord, substituting for that G. I'm also thinking about root motion of these things. That's why and, and what sounds good together. Then I have a minor two five one here. I've got C minor seven flat five to F seven minor two five one in in B flat minor, and I'm using the uh, major seven sharp five substitute once again, which is a tritone away from the half diminished chord. And then over this F seven flat nine, I'm using that flat nine flat five sound again using the tritone triad, which is either from F alter dominant or F dominant diminished. Then I come to my turnaround in B flat here, and I'm using B flat over D, which is just an inversion essentially of B flat major seven, and then F sharp major over D, and then E major over D, this is a pedal point here. And then as a transition chord, I've got D major over C sharp, which is a C sharp Phrygian sound that leads us back into the top. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like.
So here it is, a bit more up-tempo with the solo I played over it. That's all for now. Please sign up to my Everything Music YouTube channel and tell your friends about it. Also, the Beato book. Uh, anybody that wants a copy, write to me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. The Beato book is my 300-page book that goes over. It's only in PDF form that goes over all these kind of things that I talk about in, uh, in these videos, except in much much greater detail and for those of you that don't have much of a background in theory it's really essential everything you'll need to follow along and get caught up that's all for now i'm rick beato we'll see you soon